My favorite car is not the Lamborghinis. <laughs> uh, this one. This is a this is a Lincoln. So this was a a very special car. I think it's just because of the lines, the story, the history, the nostalgia, and that freaking grill. That grill looks like the probably one of the coolest royalty for grills. Mm -hmm. Look at the detail. I mean, not just the badge and and all the cool factors, but something happened with cars back in the day where they were really, didn't have too much things around their normal lives clogging up all their thoughts or creative juices. And they really got to apply it to these cars in a way that was never, never gonna be, ha never happen again. And if you uh, understand cars and you see the lines and the shape and the thoughts and how they had to build it out of clay and whatever, things they, they didn't have computers and how they had to make this thing like this it's just to me i can sit here and look at this car all day long and wonder how the fuck did they do that mm -hmm. what were they thinking there and look at the badge and look at the ball and look at the mm -hmm. i'm a detail guy so this is a yeah. detailed car beautiful detail try car. to find any car that doesn't look like plastic today <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well and right. all about mass it's a true story it, but uh, just to see how they did it in 1947. And this car made its yeah. debut in Palm Beach, by the way. Oh, wow. um, it, uh, what happened was Henry Ford was going to pass on the company to his son, Etzel Ford. So he gave him the Lincoln Division, a the company they had bought. And the first thing he uh, did, he had the Zephyr. They had the Zephyr, Lincoln did. And, and, and uh, Etzel created the V12. Um, and then he really wanted to show off to dad that he was worthy of the company and he created this car and had it built and had it sent to Palm Beach where he spent his winters. His dad did not spend his winters in Palm Beach. He spent it with uh, over in Fort Myers with Thomas Edison, as, I, as a matter of fact. And this car came to uh, Palm Beach originally, uh, quite a hit. Uh, dad was very proud of him and then Edsel died. And so this never took over the company. They had a car called the Edsel in the, in the late 50s, but he had long been dead by that point. And this really, I like to say, this is the legacy of Edsel Ford that he leaves behind. This was the last car he built? Yep, last car he Design. ever built. Yep. yep, really amazing. And it, it, it really great. has been de designated as... as uh, was I that think his was, first son, son? Edsel? Yeah, Edsel yeah. Ford. Edsel was yeah, uh, Henry, yeah, Henry yeah, Ford's yeah. So first that was, son. So that was the one. So died of, died of cancer. Rick Simpson wasn't around back then, I guess. Oh, was damn the problem. it. He needed the Might RSO. still be around. Who imagined what else he could have come up with? But yeah. it was a really a spectacular design. He brought in designers from Europe all around. He really wanted to show his talent. So it's, this is a car that won the uh, Palm Beach Concourse, as a matter of fact, that we had on the property. Um, so as best, I don't know, they have categories, you know, it's like best foreign, best this. This one, I think, won best post-war. So you have pre-war, they yep. usually divide them into categories. You get pre-war, post-war. Brass. You know, yeah, brass, uh, European, you know, they get all different, different types of, 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 of awards that they give. How many of this model was produced? Uh, to over, I think it was a little under 500 and, and a, a lot fewer as what was called the Cabriolet. So it wasn't a high production number, yeah. you know, and then the Cabriolet might have been, a, I, I'd have to go back. Usually I know those numbers, but I just don't remember it. What was interesting that I loved about this car though was what quite interesting, Rob talks about some of the uh, technologies, um, but this, this blew people away back then. They said, oh my God, look at that. 1947? It, that's not electric windows. Nope. They had, they had only six volt batteries. You would have, I already would have been dead. <laughs> yeah. This was all hydraulics. And so they had all this hydraulic system. You look at that radio. This is 1947. That radio is huge. Why is that radio so big? Who knows what the technology was in radios back in the 40s? Tubes. Tubes. You got it. All tubes. That's a tube radio. Still works to this day. It's the yep. coolest thing. I turn that thing on. It's louder as they warm up. <laughs> it takes, it take, you turn it on, exactly. You turn it up, and it takes a minute for it to warm up. That's awesome. And the little lights, huh? A little bit, mm -hmm. and then hums, and, and then it takes a while to tune. And one time I did leave it on for 10 minutes, and the battery was dead. But, you know, but yeah, it's just, it's I got to really... tell you, with cars, you know, the Ford, the Ford line, like, is, if you look at the story, the most American story of any car ever made, there is no guy named Chevy. Sorry, there is a guy named Dodge. 
But yeah. uh, Ford, Henry Ford, we know him. We know there's a guy. And yeah. sons, and had sons. And if you look at the history of just the Ford and the Model T and the way Edison helped develop the rubber tires from finding rubber trees and getting the sap and making rubber tires from horse and carriage was a quite of a big challenge for them back in the day to, to, to manufacture and make these things. But to see the family of Henry Ford start with the Model T, go to the Model A, and then stretch it out. And then you see a lot of those cars kind of look the same, right? And then you go through the brass and then you come to this Lincoln thing, which mm -hmm. is just his kids, which is generational wealth. Yeah. Obviously they're passing on the creative juices to see what you got, kid. Your dad showed you how to do it. Now it's your turn to pursue turn. it. And this was the first First of the sons. That's a good. And you sons. taught me something I did not know yesterday, Rob. I was amazed when you were. Rob came by the other day with his '56 Lincoln, right? You saw also. Nope, '56 Continental. '56. See, this is the Lincoln that. Continental. This is and cool this was all the rage, by the way, in the 50s to add a Continental kit that was called the Continental kit. Everybody wanted this new bumper in the back with a tire there, and they bought it. You, they made them for all the cars, but you bought it aftermarket. And now you know why it's called a Continental kit, because it originally came from the Lincoln Continental, right, which was the first car to ever do it. And then um, they stopped making it, of course, after Edsel died, and then they resurrected the, the Continental, but not as Lincoln. I never knew that until you told me. So what's his other Lincoln son's was yet? nowhere on that car, no. even though it was a Continental. Yeah. Had elements of being a Continental with the tire and everything, but I never knew that. Even called the Continental. Why did they do that? Do you have any idea why? Yes. Okay. So before they, it was a, it was an idea, and it was what's his other son's name? Uh, Henry Jr. That's whose yep. idea it was. Yes. Oh. The younger one, Etzel's son. Okay. 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 That's who did that, and they came in. Uh, and uh, tried to make a brand new car brand. Oh. So instead of a Lincoln, they, they, they discontinued this car after this car. You know that, right? Yeah, that, that I there knew. Is, no, yeah. is yeah. there a 48? No, they stopped Is there a 49? They, they, they is there a 50 no. Lincoln? Is there none. a 60? Stopped you know what I'm saying? There's yeah. none of them. So until the 56 pops up. And that's the next Lincoln in line from this one, which is why they called it a Mark II, even though it's not a Lincoln. They so still, what happened is they oh. kept some of the... It was even in the Lincoln factory where they made the damn thing. Yeah, but yeah, they yeah. purposely said, since we're starting this new company up, it's not going to be called a Lincoln. But since we started it as a Lincoln, we're going to have the same facilities, the same kind of ideas. But since it didn't work and we skipped a few years and now we're coming out with a new plan, they actually copied this car. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, so they, the design and layout of the way the lines work on this and the way this door drops right here like that, it comes up a little bit in the front. If you look at my car, 56 on mm -hmm. the side, it's, it's the same. You could tell design-wise, yeah, proportion -wise. evolution from mm -hmm. this car. So they said, let's build the ultimate car. We're gonna blow everybody away. Screw Rolls Royce. We're not just a Ford Model A or whatever we're trying to do, or uh, Lincoln or whatever thing. We are a whole new company that basically evolved from the Lincoln, but we're gonna call it Continental. It's a whole new company. Mm -hmm. Get rid of all the Lincoln badges. Doesn't say Lincoln anywhere on the car. On the title, it doesn't say Lincoln. It says Continental. Continental. So it was a manufactured car, just like Texas was its own country at one point, not part of the United right. States. So the Continental was its own car for two years, a manufacturing company. And it was, like I said, it's the most expensive car in the entire world in 1956. There was zero cars, not a Rolls Royce, not anything you can mention that cost more than the $14,000 uh, Continental. So that was that. And it flopped. It tanked. It failed. They lost money on it. They barely got to produce the 57 version because they already saw it tanking. Mm -hmm. And the numbers just did never hit the market like they thought. They thought they were going to reinvent the car and come up with something that was so elite and so precious that everybody's going to buy it and it flopped on them. So they quit making it and it became one of the most sought after collector Lincolns of all time. And then time. they brought Lincoln back. And then they brought Lincoln back after that, but they quit making that. 56 making that. and 57, there's no 58. It? And no, there wasn't no. a Lincoln in 56. But you know what and I there, was, there was a, okay, to clarify this, because there is a confusion here too. There is a 56 Lincoln. And it's not the Continental. No, I know that. It's not the Continental. So the Continental is not a Lincoln, but they made a Lincoln called the Zephyr. Yeah. Uh, in in, uh, in 1957, 
they made the one and they're ugly. Remember the little round lights, yeah, all yeah, rounded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I Lincoln don't. was making a car, but Continental was making another car. I see. In '56, they were it's trying so to split into a separate. People, but here's another never really de interesting detail. It takes a lot of research to figure that out. Yeah, but I I'm, didn't even I'm know fascinated the that they Thought called it, it the Mark II. Yeah. So which is, I know there were some arguments which, going on in there why they called it. it the Mark II. Why would you start the first time you ever do it as a Mark II? Two. Because those people that created this car basically said this is the Mark I. This which is they the never named it the Mark I. But out of deference to, I believe, the Continental, right? Because this is a Lincoln Continental. Out of deference to and that, to make it even they called it the Mark II. They yeah. continued the, the, the Mark line. The Mark line. So You've got they one. ran with I've Lincoln. They one. kept yep. the Lincoln. They changed some of the Lincoln names in 56 and 7. They kept making Lincolns throughout the year. But during the Mark II, they never made a Lincoln Mark II. It doesn't exist. Doesn't, doesn't There's exist. There's no such a thing as a Lincoln Mark II. But there is a Lincoln Mark III and I got a Lincoln one. Mark IV. You he got has one. the three and I have a four as well. So I got the one. We got the one, two, You got three, the two, the I got the three, you got the four. Yep, that's a true story. <laughs> it is a true story. Yeah. But yeah, one absolutely. is not a Lincoln, which was weird. That is a weird. Straight I up. never knew it until, yep, a yeah, until the other car. day. It's fascinating. A continental car. So. A little history of cars. Uh, oh, and by the way, this is the Mark III. Yeah. Okay, we're talking about this is the Continental uh, Lincoln Continental Mark III. And they did not make one in a convertible. They never made one in a convertible, so we made one. So, and this is it. And uh, so you'll never see one like this again. And it's just, this would be 71. Uh, Rob, you're, I think his, his, this is the, was the end of the Mark III. And then he's got the Mark IV, which I think was 72, 73. I think it just started right about that. So this was the cusp of it. You made it to, to a convertible? Yeah. 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 How much more room you got for more cars? <laughs> I know. I, I was looking at that. You know, I was looking at I have to get rid of the B Club Fred studio See, and I can put one more in there, it. you know? Every guy who buys cars like that, I was talking to him and I go, I go, I really I honestly, can't pack any more in here. I I'm told done, him, I, I said, when you're a car guy, you, yeah. you always think about how many, where can I park the next one? Because I, I don't know. have room, but I know I'm getting one. And I ain't selling one to get rid of it. I and make room. So all you're thinking about, can I build another? No, another? I don't either. None of us. So I got a whole other hanger on that, that property next there. It's yeah, the exact same either. like that They're one. And I'm going to connect why? the two They're on, the, on, the, on the house over there. The just for more cars. Yeah. And the story, the value, appreciation. He did it too. He had one. Now he's got two hangers. I'm doing it too.